powered by the Montana Television Network. This is the 10 o'clock news on Q2, Montana's news leader. Good evening and thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Russ Riesinger. 1.4 million Americans infected with COVID-19 and more than 85,000 dead now as this week ends. But across the country tonight, also increasing frustration from many people worried about making a, making a living and losing their personal liberties. As states across the country continue lifting social distancing measures, demonstrations against stay-at-home orders are getting heated. Elsie Preston reports from New York. Angry protesters, some of them armed, gathered at the Michigan State Capitol, demanding Governor Gretchen Whitmer lift stay-at-home orders. She says she's going by the science. She's opening the state up by the science. I don't think she knows what science is. The demonstrations come just a day after Wisconsin's stay-at-home order was thrown out, allowing bars and other businesses to welcome customers. It's been kind of boring sitting in my house. In Madison County, Illinois, local officials have already given businesses like restaurants and gyms the green light amid the coronavirus pandemic. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis says retail shops, salons and restaurants in Miami-Dade and Broward counties can begin reopening Monday. This would be an approach that would be rooted in facts, not in fear. A new CBS News poll finds a large majority of the public still prioritizes staying home to slow the outbreak over reopening the economy. But now there's a growing gap between Republicans and others on reopening. 62% of Republicans want the country to prioritize going back to work, even if it exposes more people to the virus. That's up 10 points from three weeks ago in late April. Everybody wants to reopen. The question is how you reopen. And from the national experts, global experts, make sure you don't reopen too soon. Parts of hard hit New York will begin reopening Friday. And while restrictions in New York City will remain in place, officials at the New York Stock Exchange plan to reopen the trading floor the day after Memorial Day. Elise Preston, CBS News, New York. Well, two witnesses told lawmakers on Capitol Hill that the Trump administration ignored early warnings of supply shortages at the outset of the coronavirus outbreak. One of them, whistleblower Dr. Rick Bright of the National Institutes for Health, warned that 2020 would be the, quote, darkest winter in modern history if more isn't done at the federal level to combat the virus. We do not still have enough personal protective equipment to manage our health care workers and protect them from influenza and COVID-19. We still do not have the supply chains ramped up for the drugs and vaccines, and we still don't have plans in place on how we distribute those drugs and vaccines. Bright filed a whistleblower complaint claiming he was transferred from directing a vaccine team at the Department of Health and Human Services after he pushed back on the wide use of anti-malaria drugs. President Trump called him a disgruntled employee. I never met him. I don't want to meet him, but I watched him and he looks like an angry, disgruntled employee who, frankly, according to some people, didn't do a very good job. A Q2 has confirmed that there are four new positive COVID-19 cases in Bighorn County. County health officials say those positive results came back today. The county is also awaiting results on seven pending COVID-19 tests. These four new cases would bring the total number of coronavirus cases in Bighorn County to eight. Six of those are active. On Monday, the Bighorn County Health Authorities confirmed the county's fourth case, a woman here in her 20s. And not long after that, the mayor of Lodgegrass, Quincy Dabney, ordered the town back under lockdown. Custer County also reported two new cases tonight, but those two are out of state residents, much like the county's first positive case. The Custer County Unified Health Command said in a news release that all three cases are correlated and the individuals have had very limited contact with the general public. There were no other positive cases reported today. In Wyoming, the state reported another nine new confirmed cases today, bringing the state's total to 529. Fremont County still sits with the highest count at 193 confirmed cases. Well, the University of Montana economist says since mid-February and COVID-19, Montana's economy has declined too quickly to adequately measure. Q2's David J reports the university's analysis shows a possible two-year recovery. 
the downturn that is uh, all around us right now in the economy as we sit here in the month of May will easily eclipse the largest downturn that we've seen in the state economy in the, in the post-World War II era. Patrick Barkey of the University of Montana says the state has 650,000 jobs, and he says job losses are more than he expected one month ago. We thought at that time that we were looking at about an average of 50,000 jobs fewer. Our expectation is now that the state economy will suffer about a 75,000 job loss in 2020. And he says the more than 10 percent cut in jobs for 2020 is severe. In the space of one month, our forecast changed a lot and it can change again. Not necessarily for the worse, but it's that kind of situation. There's so many uncertainties out there. So we're trying not to go overboard on this in the sense of saying this is exactly what's going to happen. We should prepare for it. But rather what we're trying to say is that we're facing a very significant economic challenge. Montana is not going to be spared. Neither will Billings nor any other part of the state of Montana be spared the hardship of this downturn. Barkey says Montana could see growth by the end of the year, but it may take until 2021 and 2022 to get close to projections before COVID-19. Do I think things will be worse than what we said? They could be, but 10% employment decline, 11% personal income decline, those are pretty nasty projections. It's a realistic assessment of where we are now. Am I optimistic about the future? Well, certainly I am. I think we're going to grow again, and when we grow again, we're going to grow rapidly, but we're digging out of a very deep hole. In Billings, David J. MTN News. All right, thank you, David. Dr. Barkey made his presentation to the Big Sky Economic Development's Economic Response Recovery Team this afternoon on Zoom. Weekly figures from the Department of Labor indicate that 3 million Americans filed initial claims for unemployment last week. Now, as Montana moves forward to reopen, those currently on unemployment may have a lot of questions. MTN's Annie Johnson talked with an expert today and breaks it down for us. One day you're working from home and the next your employer might be asking you to come back to work. But what's your rights as an employer and as an employee? This is a unique time where I've never had to say it depends with almost every legal question posed that's related to any of the policy changes around COVID because they are updating them so frequently. So let's break it down starting with the employee. If the employer offers them their job back, they do need to come back. Otherwise, they, and they will not, if they refuse to return to work, then there is a good possibility that they will not be eligible for unemployment. But there are several circumstances where an employee has valid reason to not return. If they're a primary child caregiver and there's nobody else at home and that's the reason that they're refusing to return to work, or if they are a caregiver for somebody who's been affected by COVID. And the employer has specific responsibilities to uphold before they can ask employees to return. The employer who's asking them to come back is still required to be following the phased reopening directives. But a responsibility the employer doesn't have is determining whether someone can or cannot receive unemployment benefits. Whether or not they continue to receive unemployment benefits is made by the Department of Labor and not the employer. If either party has concerns, the best place to start is the Department of Labor's website. Go to the website and look and see if any of the questions posed have an immediate answer or at least some guidance so that they know if they have recourse. There's so much information out there for both employers and employees to find a reasonable solution. Reporting in Bozeman, Annie Johnson, MTN News. More than 36 million Americans have applied for unemployment benefits within the last eight weeks. All right, turning now to Chief Forecaster Bob McGuire. And Bob, the race is on as plows look to clear off the Beartooth Pass. Yeah, a lot of folks in Red Lodge are calling these guys heroes. Let me show you what we're talking about. Let's go to the video. It's these guys. Yeah, the ones that are plowing the road, the Beartooth Highway. You know, a lot of money goes to Red Lodge for uh, this Beartooth Highway. And as you can see, these guys are doing really well. They're trying to get very close to the top. They're at uh, uh, Vista Point. And the story is they want to get there by the 22nd of uh, May. Uh, they hope to get there by uh, 8 or nine o'clock in the morning and then beyond that if wyoming has finished their side then you can pay, maybe go all the way down to yellowstone park but if there isn't you'll probably have to turn around at vista point and come back on down but i tell you what these guys here in montana they're doing some great work and the folks at red lodge well, they're just calling them heroes our forecast well you may call me a hero before the weekend is over with we'll talk about that in a few more minutes
All right, thank you, Bob. Well, the COVID-19 storm has nearly brought air travel to a standstill across America and around the world, and that is certainly evident in the latest numbers from Billings Logan International Airport. The number of departing or connecting passengers from Billings dropped by more than 90% in April compared to last year. An average of just 78 people flew out of Billings during the month compared to 1,175 a day in April of 2019. Flights by nearly all the carriers serving billion, uh, Billings have been reduced during the pandemic, with only Cape Air still flying its normal schedule of 13 flights a day. Now, there has been a slight uptick of passengers so far in May, that number averaging about 160 a day now. And, well, that's just a fraction of how many would normally be flying. Airport Director Kevin Plone says that at least... It's a move in the right direction. Well, despite case numbers dropping across the state, summer events around Montana continue to be wiped out. The Tippett Rise Arts Center near Fishtail announced today that they're canceling their upcoming summer concerts and sculpture tours. They are providing some digital alternatives, and those can be found on our website, ktvq.com. It was also announced today that country music star Kenny Chesney has postponed his summer tour, including the July 5th show at Bobcat Stadium in Bozeman. Chesney did write that the tour will be rescheduled for 2021, but those dates are going to be announced later. All right, still to come on tonight's 10 o'clock news. Well, everyone is expecting a heated campaign between Steve Daines and Steve Bullock. They have to survive the primary first. We'll meet their competitors coming up next. And later in sports, remember last fall when the Columbus locker room was burglarized and two cars were stolen during a home game? Well, Scott has the rest of the story you don't want to miss. You're watching MTN News with Janelle Slade and Russ Riesinger. Storm Tracker Weather with Bob McGuire and Sports with Scott Breen. This is the 10 o'clock news on Q2, Montana's news leader.